Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please, let's have a seat briefly. Please celebrate God's servant for me this morning. Uh, yes, you snore. But it was my prayer timetable. Uh, but no way, I'm just making jest of it. Uh, I want to thank God for Pastor Desmond. Uh, I'm not a man that used so much words on people, but I want to thank God for him, and I've said it behind him. If my friend has done anything that is worthwhile for me, is his consistency in season and out of season. The Bible says if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. How many of you know ministry is work? If you see a church running for 14 years, the waters that have passed under the bridge is more than you can think. I'm not telling you what I don't know. I'm telling you what I know. So when I, just, you know, sometimes we, we, we have a way of taking it for granted and feel, well, what's church? Some people even say, what's church? Oh, buy a speaker, clap hand, get venue. <laughs> have you looked for venue before? You can look for venue until you doubt whether God call you. Everywhere you are going, people are saying, wow, you could, no, no, there's no value for you here. Jesus even found, they looked for a place to give back to Jesus. They didn't find. It was the first thing to prove whether it's Messiah or not. And sometimes you have to just give back. Because when the bad pants come, even if you find a manger, you just give back. That's why our beginning does not look like where we are going. Because many at times we just have to just give back. And as long as it leaves, God is going to take it higher. And that's what I'm celebrating in this house today. Hallelujah. And not just Pastor Desmond, but Sister Jumi. I know her Sister Jumi before she became Pastor Jumi. And uh, don't let me tell you our secret stories. And I can tell you, I knew her before Pastor Desmond knew her. Uh, so I thought you should give, give me a big one. Uh, I've been here. That's a lot. And I will not say more than that. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for... Please, I want to... If you can do me this honor, I just want them to remain seated and I want every other person to stand up and just give a clap and celebrate the consistency, the sense of duty that my friend and his wife has shown, our pastor has shown in this work in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless you and keep you for us. By this time next year, if Jesus tarries, we will see you in a higher level. We will see you at a higher plane in the name of Jesus Christ. We celebrate you. Please give the Lord a big hand again as you have your seat. Um, and so, Pastor Wilson, uh, thank you for being here this morning. Pastor Tony, uh, I have one of my friends here, Pastor Ruti Mifato Ibo is here. Thank you for joining this service this morning. Uh, amen. Uh, so that I will not uh, bore you, because I'm not a fantastic preacher like your pastor, I will just go into the Bible. Amen. Jesus, the Son of God, thank you for bringing us to this moment. And in Jesus' name, we ask, Lord, that you grant us access to something edifying, something that has been prepared from the foundation of the world for us. Let everything that you have proposed and you have thought to do in our midst be possible in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you couldn't do much miracles in Nazareth because of their unbelief. We say that's not our portion. Lord will believe. Lord will believe. Do all you can do and even exceed our expectations in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say the amen very well. Amen. So yesterday I spoke to us about those who came first. And uh, let me just read the Bible again where we took a text from. 2 Samuel chapter 19 from verse 9 to 20. But I will not read all through. I will just pick some scriptures for us there. 2 Samuel 19 verse 9. This was after the death of Absalom. Absalom was one of the greatest shakings to David's reign. When Absalom came upon David, David lost so many things. The Bible said the king ran out of Jerusalem. The king ran barefooted. 
The king had dust on his head. The king didn't know his right hand from his left. He didn't know who was for him and who was against him. Absalom was such a vicious attacker of David because he slept with seven wives of David in one day in the face of all Israel. Absalom was willing to kill his own father. And sometimes when you are fighting what you can't raise your hand against, it's even a harder fight. Because it was, it was a victory David couldn't celebrate. Everybody wants to hear the enemy is out of the way, but when the enemy is your son. So the Bible says that victory that day turned to sorrow. Because God, God's enemy was dead, but the enemy was his son. There are some tough battles in life. That's Absalom. And so the Bible says, David returned. Verse 9 said, Now there was strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king, that's David, saved us out of the hand of our enemies. He delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. And it fled from the, from, from the land for Absalom. There is a contradiction there. He saved us, he delivered us, but he fled. It's the same way we saw Jesus, the Savior, the healer, the deliverer. But again, we saw him on the cross, so helpless. And we couldn't discern what exactly he is. The story of David is the story of a giant killer. Yet it's the story of a man that ran from his own son. Are you following me? And, and, and that's why. So the Bible said, when some people saw these things, they concluded something is wrong with David. I mean, some people felt the cross was the easiest place for Jesus to prove his deity. They told him, come down from the cross. We will believe you. I mean, it's just that simple. But the sun fell, the darkness fell, and he died. And in fact, he even died so cheaply because the Bible says when they got there, the two other people crucified with him were still struggling for life. He was gone. I mean, everybody just says, ah. I, you know, when, they, when some people die, they say, ah. You know, it's like they weighed him and it was nothing. So these people said, the king delivered us. But at this time, the king had fled for Absalom. But they now said, but Absalom, whom we anointed over us, has died in battle. Now, therefore, why do we say nothing about bringing the king back? So King David sent to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house. You are my brethren. You are my bones and my flesh. Why then are you the last? To bring back the king. Continue a bit. And say ye to Amasa, Are thou not my bone and my flesh? God do so to me and also. If thou not be captain of the host before me continually in the place of Joab. So he swayed the hearts of all the men of Judah just as the art of one man. So they send this word to the king. Return and all your servants. And where we stood yesterday is verse 16. And she married the son of Gerai, Benjamite, who was from Barum, hurried and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. There were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him. And they went over Jordan before the king. And there a ferry boat went across to carry over the king's household and to do what they thought good. Now she married the son of Gerai, fell down before the king when he had crossed the Jordan. Then he said to the king, do not let my lord impute iniquity to me, nor remember the wrong that your servant did on the day that my lord the king left Jerusalem, for the, that the king should take it to heart. For I, your servant, know that I have sinned. Therefore, I am here, the first to come today of all the house of Joseph, to go down to meet the lord the king. So last night we dealt with those that came first. And those that came first, was represented by Shimei. Shimei was a man that caused David with grievous cause in the day of his battle. And it, I mean, it looks right to cause David. If his own son is fighting, 
Everybody feels like it's right to react to him. But suddenly, God opened his eyes and he discovered he had, he had sinned. That statement he said was a statement of restoration of the prodigal son. I have sinned against heaven. It's a blessing to know when you have had. Because you have given yourself an opportunity to find the right way. Sometimes when the enemy wants you to be destroyed, it blinds you from seeing the errors that we have done. The truth of the matter is that we all do wrong things at one point or the other. But blessed is the man whose iniquity is not imputed on him. A man that is blessed is a man that finds his way out of his errors. And whatever has happened in your life that the enemy wants to hold on to, you will find your way out of it. I thought you would say a better amen. amen in the name of Jesus. You see, sometimes uh, Jesus gave a, a story in the book of Matthew 21 from verse 28. He said, what do you think? He said, a man had two sons and he spoke to the sons and said, go to my vineyard and walk. And the Bible said, the first one said, I will not go. And the second said, said I will go. Because those are the two responses. In this service this morning, there will be people that will lock on to every word that is said. And they will be willing to go. And there will be people that might trade with it and say, well, maybe next service. Those are the two responses. It's either you show apathy or you show faith. Those are the two responses that are possible this morning. One said, I will not go. The other said, I will go. But the Bible now said, the one that said, I will not go, change this mind. Because there is an opportunity to change your mind. Are you hearing me? He changed his mind. And when he changed his mind, he said, I will go. And the one that said, I will go, did not go. Then Jesus asked a question. So who did his father's will? Willing and doing the father's will is more than emotional excitement. Because there was one that said, I will go, but he did not go. And do you know the answer Jesus gave eventually? He said, the one that said, I will not go, but changed his mind is one that did the father's will. And do you know how he concluded it? He said, Verily I say to you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom before you. That's why when people who have deeply seen find Jesus, there is such speed that is their response gives to their, to, you know, to, their, to, to Jesus. Because the publicans and the harlots, and in the scripture, publicans and harlots were the highest category of iniquity. Some people believe everything that's happened to them, they deserve it because they know they've been wrong. And that's why when they see the mercy of God, it's always too much for them. Are you following me? They are the ones that come first. But do you know the funny thing I've come to talk to you this morning? This morning I've come to talk to you about those that came last. Those that came last, many a times, don't have the baggage of the people that come first. Those that came last, many a times, feel that they are doing God some favor. Those that came last many a times are people who all their lives have been church people. So church is normal. Are you following me? Where will you be on a Sunday? It was a rhythm. You were trained to be in church even when you didn't know what they were doing there. So he said, Sunday is like I wake up, I go to work on Monday, so I go to church on Sunday. You know that type of thing. And that's why many of the people say, well, maybe I'm in the house, but I'm not going to be a worker. You know, me. I just want to. Because they don't feel any baggage, but it's a deception from hell. Are you following me? The Bible told us in the story I read to us this morning that the people that came last were the men of Judah. The men of Judah. David the king was from the tribe of Judah. His own king's people, his own king's men were the people that came last. Who are the people that come last? Number one, people that have a deep sense of guilt. Let me explain what I mean to you. The battle David faced was a strange battle. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 17 said a statement that struck me. He said, a brother is born for adversity. Repeat after me. Say, a brother is born for adversity. 
when they give birth to you in your house and you have a brother, the, the parable God is telling you with your siblings is that in your journey you will need company soon at one point or the other. And company is known more during crisis. Do you have siblings? What the Bible is telling you is that life is full of adversity. And you will need to be there for them at one point as they will need to be there for you at one point. Are you following me? When you claim that we are brothers, when we claim that, oh, you know, in church we hold our hands and say, we are one family. What we are saying to ourselves is that we will never be alone in the days of adversity. A brother does not help in adversity. He is born for it. Did you get what I'm saying? It's his purpose. So sometimes when I'm standing with you in the days of adversity, I'm not helping you. I am fulfilling the reason why I'm in your life. No husband thanks his, you know, and says, well, my wife, you know, I helped you in the day of crisis. You helped yourself. Do, do you understand? One of the battles we are having in church today is to be able to bat oneness in the church. Men, I did an experiment for people in our church very recently. I called two people in, in front of a workers' meeting. Then I put something on their heads, like a piece of paper, two ladies. So I said, I told one, help the other person to remove what is on her head. Like she didn't even know something is there. What would be the natural response? If somebody comes to you and says, Pastor Desmond, stop. There's something on your head and he removes it. What would be your natural response? You say, thank you. But if you know there's something on your head, then you use your hand and remove it. Do you say thank you to your hand? How many of you have thanked your hand for moving to move something out of your head? You think it is normal. Do you get what I'm talking about? Every time people need a thank you for whatever they do to you, they are not you. So every time you say you are a member of the body of Christ, but you still expect thank you for everything you do, you have not yet been baptized into that body. A brother is born for adversity. Are you following me? But David's battle was so strange. Number one, his greatest enemy was his own son. How many of, and his own son made a man called Amasa a captain. Do you know Amasa? Now, let me explain to you because of time. In First Chronicles 2, 12 to 17, the Bible gave us the genealogy of David, and this is how it gave us. Boaz gave birth to Obed, gave birth to Jesse. Jesse gave birth to seven children. From Eliab to the seventh, which is David. Then Jesse gave birth to two daughters. One was Zeruiah and the other was Abigail. Zeruiah was the one that gave birth to Joab, Abishai, and Asahel. If you are a good student of the Bible, you will know these names. They were very prominent men in David's army. And the other sister, Abigail, was the one that gave birth to Amasa. In other words... Amasa was David's nephew. But, you see, the, uh, the warfare David fought was a warfare of his own son removing him command, in an army commanded by his nephew. Uh -uh. Hey, get it. How many of you feel David needs to visit some churches where the family deliverance needs to happen? And if you know, the, the, the family was so full of crisis that it was Joab that killed Amasa. Joab was the cousin of Amasa, but he was the one that had to execute judgment on him. Do you understand? Now, how many of you know, we all know, expect things to happen, but when it happens from some quarters, it will be very hard to recover trust. Let me tell you something. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 19 said, A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Aye. Hey, we all offend. Sometimes what your wife do to you at home that you are fighting against is not as much as what your bosses do to you at work. And you get up early in the morning and go to work. They rate for you throughout last week, but you are going tomorrow. 
But, but you see, the proximity of the pain determines how you will overcome it, whether it will be easy or not. A brother that is offended is harder to be won. One of the reasons why Judah couldn't come was because how will it be said that we his cousins were the ones who wanted to remove him? There was no boldness. Because there are certain things that are harder to be won. Are you following me? For example, we all say we are members of the body of Christ. Do you understand? It's like when Peter said, if everybody deny you, I cannot deny you. You say, I work poor. You know what I'm saying? Many times people have promised you too much than they delivered. And sometimes you have promised God too much. How many of you remember? I love you, Lord. I'll do anything for you. You're giving me your life. Lord, anything. Lord, uh, Lord, if you give me a child, I'll give you the child. Lord, my salary, if you call for it. Then God said, no problem. No problem. Next three months, I need the salary. He said, God, how can you talk like that? You didn't just rebuke God. You started become, you started going back. So when God is not saying, I'm still calling your name. Because you have created a gulf. But let me tell you, a brother that is offended is harder to be won, but not impossible to be won. It can be won. You can overcome every form of offense. Are you hearing the word of God? I said you can overcome every form of offense. It might be hard. It might be painful, but it is possible. Are you following me? I said it is possible. One of the reasons they didn't come was that deep sense of guilt. So David had to say, Amasa, are you not my bone and flesh? He said, I am. He said, I make you captain. But the man said, but I'm the one that led the army that almost killed you. He said, I make you captain. That's the, that's, the, that's the grace of God. The grace of God that turned his enemies to his apostles. Are you following me? I want to say, so, so to, to this morning, I want you to come to that consciousness that no matter what has happened between you and God, you can overcome it. Are you following me, church? I said, you can overcome it. I said, you can overcome it. God will give you the wisdom. God will give you the strength. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 17, when Jesus resurrected and, and it was speaking and, and, and the angels were speaking to the people that saw the, the empty tomb, they said, go tell all his disciples that he has resurrected and Peter. The question I ask is, why do you have to isolate Peter? Is he not part of disciples? Ah, because Peter was that man that said, count me different from every person. Pastor, I'm with you. Almost everybody, you see, after this work of ministry, most people that say, do you know why we celebrate our friends when we see them? Because it's not common to see people with you. I celebrate Pastor Roti Mivato Imbo. It was, we, we left the university. It was one year behind me in school when we left 2003. This is 2023. There were so many people who I felt were closer at that time that I've not seen. There was a lady I met at a ceremony in Lagos yesterday, a cousin of mine that we grew up together. The first time we spoke in 20 years was yesterday. And we were mates in the same class and graduated in the same set in the university, in the same class. It's not far cousin. This is a cousin we used to, you know, those type of cousins that when you are growing, everybody comes to celebrate holiday in your house. You don't get it. I spoke to her for the first time. We looked at each other. Say, first time. You know, I got to know how she was wedding. I will tell you the story. I was in Akumba preaching one day. I came from Anambra that time. I was preaching. After a first session, somebody pinged me and said, do you know your cousin is getting wedded? They are having a wedding in the school. And I said, which cousin? Then I went there. Then I saw everybody. Even my father and mother were there. <laughs> I just felt, uh, have I become so prodigal? She was my age mate. You know in, your, in Yoruba land, your age mate, is the, when you are young, they will say, ah, he's your friend. Hey, this your... 
So I said, ah. that day I knew that something. <laughs> so listen, there are some things. When some things strike close, mm. except God reassures you, you can't come boldly. Mm. I've not come to talk to people who have not fallen below their own expectation. Judah fell below his own expectation. That's one of the reasons why they were the last. So when everybody said, he said, I'm master, are you not my bone? He said, you will be captain. And the Bible said, David swayed their hearts to him. The type of word that will make you overcome every guilt in your heart, the Lord will speak it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ. But let me tell you another reason why people come late like that. It's a sense of entitlement. Do you know why Shimei came first? Shimei knew he deserved to die. So he quickly organized his own escape. But Judah, there was David's cousins, friends, relatives. Uh, how many of you know that the kingdom of David is divided into two sides. There was seven years that David ruled over Judah before it 33 years that he ruled over Israel. Judah was the first to respond to the kingdom of David when Israel was not willing. But they were the last to bring back David when the kingdom was strengthened. The first will become the last. One of the things that make the first to become the last is a sense of entitlement. They are his people. And that's where even today it's a parable. Like Pastor Desmond has been saying it. We were in Israel recently this year. And we all go, when we were there, we saw everybody from every nation of the world. We saw people. We saw a Zulu king dressed in all those traditional South African things. We met Polish. Occasionally, I asked myself, what would these Jews be thinking? Ah, these guys are idiots. That's the way they would be thinking like us. What's wrong with these people? Oh, it doesn't matter to them because as long as it's bringing foreign exchange for them. Because when you say Jesus, they say Jesus. They know his story. Mm -hmm. We can draw the chart. You will just come. When you say Jesus, you'll be feeling goosebumps. You say Jesus, Jesus, son of God. You need to see the drama people do. When some people go to Mount Nebo, they will kneel down. When some, people, some, some people want to see angel everywhere. Sometimes I'll just say, Pastor Desmond, is there a place we can get biscuits? It's part of the pilgrimage. People just, you know, you know Nigerians. Then they will put their Facebook. And now it Mount Kame. We had the fire fair. If the fire does not fall in your room, you are wasting your time. I'm now in Mount Kame. We had the prayer will be answered. I'm bringing. text is the story of the Hebrews. Whether you want to serve God in Mongolia, your sacred text is the story of the Bible. If you go to Zululand, your sacred text, because you only have I chosen, but it's funny that these only people chosen became the crucifiers of Jesus. It's funny that these only people chosen became the enemies of the gospel. So what have you received from God? If you are not careful in the spirit, the enemy can turn it against you. You only. It became their pride. Sometimes when we want to talk to them, we say, we are of the stock of Abraham. Some of you say, when Pastor Desmond was starting, we were the ones there. Hello, Nijeko Dito, Moelara, Rasha. 
You know, some people just say, we were there. The, when this church, we were, I was the first, the first person that used to carry his Bible. Do you know what is in the Bible? I was the first, the first choir master. When there was no keyboard, our voice was keyboard. I thank God for it. But please, I hope you are still first. When they are still calling for God's people to respond, are you still taking, maintaining your place, maintaining your stand? Because you must not lose your place. Tell your neighbor, you must not lose your place. God will keep you in your place. Say the amen very well. Amen. The story of the prodigal son was the story of two sons. An elder and a younger brother. Luke chapter 15. And the younger brother said, give me all that belongs to me. And he went. And the, young, and the older brother was serving the father. And the younger brother spent his life in riot. He, was just, he just did everything that came through his mind. Then he became poor. And he became shameful. He couldn't go back home. He was almost eating the food of pigs. Until he came to himself. And said, how many of my father's servants... Have much to eat and to spare. And I'm here. He said, I'll go to my father. I'll say to my father, I have sinned. And you know the whole story. And he came. And the father did something very strange. He killed, it, he, he killed I mean, the fatted calf. And threw a party. And the Bible says, the elder brother was in the field. He used to be the one left at home. But when the one that left the house came back to the house, he was not in the house. So he was one that came and he saw a pattern and said, what is happening? The one they used to ask questions now is the one asking questions. The one that used to describe the house now is so much outside. They said, what is happening? There is your brother. It's your brother. You know that one. He did. And the Bible said he refused to enter. Why did he refuse to enter? Because he felt his father did not do him good. That is what I call offense. Offense will push you out of your place. Are you hearing me? And it's one tool the enemy has used for churches. Oh, more you mean be? If I'm in some place, I'm a zona pastor. <laughs> then you just push yourself out. But thank God for the magnanimity of the father. The father went out. Why are you not coming? He said, my father. Since I've been young. I've never offended you one day. I told you, Judah were the first to embrace jo David's kingdom, but they were the last to come at his restoration. I was the, I've been here. I've never done anything wrong. But you have not even given me one kid, one goat to play. This your funny son has come. And you are killing the fatted calf. The father said, your brother did not just go. Your brother died. If your perspective will change, you will understand that this is a season of celebration. This, your brother was dead. You, you, your mind told you your brother is enjoying. If you knew what your brother had seen. How many times have you concluded without knowing things accurately? The only idea that was playing in the mind of the elder brother is that my brother went out, enjoyed, came back, is enjoying. He didn't see him eating swine's food. He didn't see. Do you know how many times you concluded, you thought something true by yourself and you didn't allow God to interface with your thoughts and you made conclusions on your thoughts and your thoughts are so limited. They are not revelation. Don't act the way you feel. Act the way God instructs you because the way you feel is still limited. You know in part. Are you following me? You thought your brother went to enjoy himself. The father said, there's some, another part of this deal you don't know. This, your brother was dead. But now he's alive. Are you hearing me? He said, that's, that's the reason. That's the reason. And suddenly, the one that used to be in the house became the last entrant into the party because of offense. Again, you know the story. And the scripture is full of this thing. And if it is not a very serious thing, 
you will never see Jesus repeating it. It was always in the scripture, always in the teachings of Jesus that the first will be the last. Did you see? He didn't say it once. He said it over and over and over and over again, which means you have to be very sensitive. You have to be very careful. Positions are movable. Are you following me? Jesus kept saying it. I don't have time. I would have shown you so many scriptures. I, I, could, I could show you a bit of them where Jesus kept saying, you will see it in Matthew 19.30. You see it in Matthew 20.16. Jesus kept saying the same statement. The first shall be the last. And the last shall be the first. The first shall be the last. And the last. And he kept saying it. By the time you get to Matthew, Matthew again, chapter 20, verse, verse 1 to 16, he gave a parable. And you know the parable. A man had a vineyard. And he went out in the morning to gather laborers to his vineyard. And he agreed with them that he would pay them an amount of money. And everybody said, deal. And they started working. Then the third hour into the day, he went out again and saw some people standing. Why are you still standing? He said, well, we are standing because nobody has employed us. I said, go into my work. I'll give you whatever I want to give you. It went at the sixth hour. Until the eleventh hour, which was one hour to the end of working time. Then he saw some people still idle. Then he said, enter. The Bible said when evening was come and they wanted to give people their thing. He called the steward and said, start from the last. Listen, when you read this story, you are always angry. Even me, I'm angry when I'm reading it. Start from the last. Then he gave the last. I don't know the amount of dinner he gave them. The same that he had agreed with people that started working, gave them. Then the Bible said the people who started working the morning started thinking, uh, Ogama Shiva Rada. Uh, uh, see what Oga did. <laughs> see, the person that came eleven thousand, I just gave him five thousand. Ah. <laughs> uh, today, today. Some of them called their wife. Said, hey, hey, we are not eating. We are not eating about this night. Change it, change it, change it. Tell her something around you to get three, two bars of yam. Just tell her, I'm coming. I'm coming. Because they had the worth and expectation of themselves. And it was derived by others. Some of you say God is not good to you because of what God has done to other people. So you stop looking at what God did to you. That you stop praising God for what God did to you because of what he has done to some other people. Even especially people who don't pray as much as you pray. You don't understand that everybody have their parts. And everybody have their assignment. Are you following me? There are pastors that are terrified when a church member buys a car that seems to be bigger than them. She knew church, no. She knew church, no. She knew church, no. She knew church, no. Who told you your reward is a car? Where you have them, you have everything. You can even tell them, carry the car. I'm going to Koroduna and they will go. Because you have something more than that car. God is putting you in a higher pedestal. You are fighting for a lower thing. Are you hearing the word? <laughs> but the Bible says when those people came, he gave them the same dinner and they were hungry. If there was an opportunity for, to call for strike, it was the moment. Then, ah, Lord, 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 ah, ah, no, 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 no. They murmured against the good man of the house. Have you murmured? Murmuring is in the heart. You don't talk about it. It is well. It's not only opening prayer they allow me to do. Only opening prayer. If you know the ranking I came with, the ranking. The ranking. <laughs> May God bring you back to the days of simplicity again. The days when you just want to see the will of God done. How many of you know that's where we all started from? Pastor, you, it, it was your age-long ambition to be struggling so that people can hear. The, so, have you ever woken up on a Saturday and said, tomorrow is Sunday, have you? No, because me, it happens to me. You, you are well adapted for the work. And I tell myself, and I'm running around and everybody, some people just say, we have, we, we have swept the church. Pastor, see how your people were harassing me last night. After finishing all the sweat and preaching, that brother came up and said, the reward for good work is more work. 
He said, thank you for the revelation you shared today. Emumi walola. That's the meaning. Please say another thing. Say another. That's how people get easily dissatisfied. <laughs> That's how some pastors will start looking for what God did not send them. Then they will say, when Goliath killed Joe David. Because people told them we have had that story so much. Bring another thing. Bring another thing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just pulling your leg. You understand what I'm talking about? So th- this, this is the pressure. This is the pressure. But listen to me, church. Whatever God has called you to do, the, pr- the privilege that you are, you are even known by name is what I want you to celebrate. The privilege that your name is in the book of life. Are you following me? Because let me tell you one truth. Nobody can reward you. What can I give to you for, for the sacrifices you have done that I don't even know what motivated it? Only one person knew what you were going through when you were taking decisions you were taking. And that person is faithful. I said, our God is faithful. And he will reward you. I said, he will reward you. The people that come last are the deniers. Matthew 6, 26, 69 to 25. When Peter denied Jesus. I like the Matthew story. A young girl came to Peter. You have been with him. He said, I don't know him. Then the Bible said, after some time, another person came and he denied him with a hoat. This time, eh? as the Lord leave it. Amen. And the third time, the Bible said, then he cursed. You didn't read it in Matthew. He moved from face to face. He first denied him, then he denied him with a hood, then he denied it. Timbamo. If I, Amy. So when he saw Jesus' face, he went out and his like cried. Those people don't come to prayer meeting. Because every, the last picture I saw was Jesus' face. And he couldn't read that face. He thought it was a face of disappointment. It was just a face of fulfillment. Jesus said, I told you. I told you. But do you know what has happened before I told you? Satan desired to sift you, but I have prayed for you. There is something that has happened before you disappointed me. Are you following me? That's why you will not allow the enemy to conclude on a fall. You see, we all make, there are times I felt God did not reward me enough. Even me. Then you look at some men of God around you. Some of them will say, Ah, man of God, we like your sermon. I say, I let keep the sermon. Let God give me what He has given you. Who needs what you have now more than me? This sermon will travel around the world if I have what you have. But God is wise, He knows what He's doing, and there's time for everything. And your time will come. Amen. I thought you would say better, amen. amen. And your time will come. See, stop. It doesn't matter what God is doing around you. Somebody said, if God ever does anything around you, what he's telling you is that God is in your neighborhood. At least if he, if he has not come to your house, he's already around. He's already around. He has knocked the door of your neighbor. That's why you need to celebrate with them that celebrate. When they give testimonies, don't begin to cry. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It works in Fortress International Church. That is that person's time. My time will come. Are you following me? Are you following me? Because somebody that needs to hear your own testimony is not yet in church. So God is holding the testimony. God is holding the testimony. When that person opens the door and enters, God said, oh, this is the time to activate what I've decided for your life. Are you following me? It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely speak. Though it tarries, wait for it. Are you following me? Your waiting is not wasting. So I've come for six months. I've come for seven months. And every time they keep saying this thing, your waiting is not wasting. God is making sure that when you come in at that instant, can you imagine Simon, that old man that God said will not see death, coming into the temple 15 minutes before Jesus was, bought, was brought and he left. Then he will go to God and say, God, but you told me I will see the Messiah. Jesus will say, God will say, the Messiah came. But the Bible said, when they brought the child, at that instant, there are things that must happen to you to collide with some other things. 
The reason why some things have not happened is because the other forces that must ha was happen with them are still in waiting. Are you following me? So when the man came to the temple that day, it was because the child came into the temple that day. And that was when Anna came into the temple that day. God was creating a, a force field that was bringing things together. Sometimes some things will happen to your church when a neighbor comes. The neighbor thought he came to do business, but he was sent to come and attach yourself, himself to you. Are you following me? Are you following me? When God sent me to Ibadan in 2006, he said, when I send people, I don't send them alone. He said, I send them two by two. In our days, it doesn't mean that you have to go with somebody beside you. Somebody will relocate to Lagos. He thought he's going to ally the insurance. He's not coming to highlight the insurance. It's because you have been sent and you are not sent alone. So he will be driving around the street. What is this fortress? Do you know how many churches he knows? What is this fortress? Every time I pass, this fortress... Then it will come one day. He just said, let me, let me. One lady was giving testimony in her church. She said she had decided that she was leaving her church one day because she was due to marry. And she, that many years ago, and she looked all around. All the entire uh, uh, eligible brothers were married or taken. And sister cannot fight. So she said she had prepared that this particular Sunday she was going to hug everybody, love everybody because that's the last time she was coming to church. As she entered and opened the door, my sister pastor was having Bible study. He said, and the man, the man said, Ruth went to the land of Moab because there was famine in Israel. When she got there, her husband died. Her two children died. He said, ah. He said she just knew. Today she has three children in that church. She met her husband in that same church she wanted to leave. You don't get what I'm talking about. Some things must wait until what God has ordained for it comes together with it. You will come to in contact with your miracle. If it is a person, if it's an opportunity, you will come in contact with your miracle. I thought you would say a better amen. amen. The reason why you have waited and you don't know the reason why. I'm saying, why am I waiting? Why couldn't I change my mind? Why couldn't I apply for Canada when everybody was applying? Something kept holding me back. No, no, no. Some of you are going, but that's your headache. But some of the other people are here and that's their whole purpose. Don't worry. But something kept holding me back. Holding me back until you discover. So let me tell you something. When you follow God, one day you are going to wake up and say, God is wise. Yeah. It, will, it will happen. There's no way. One day you will wake up and say, Ah, so ah! Stadium again knows now. See, so all of them, they, God helped them quick, quick. They married. Me. They started praying. Said, This pastor move. She didn't say, Bitty, I wrote him out. Some of them say, Ah, there's one sister I've seen now. This, this is. Then, Pastor Move just said, I'm not led. My father in law looked at me one day and said, He didn't have any spiritual counsel to give me. He just told me, One mama come well on. <laughs> you know, when someone does not have any spiritual. But listen, every time I look back, I just say, Ah, there are some, even this one knows, the past this one knows. They will call me and say, Pastor, move. You dodge the bullet. Because people have become something strange after we left school. Ah, one of them that they, all of them were campaigning for. The last time I saw her, she was selling sex toy. Can you imagine me prophesying? So, God knows what he's doing in your life. Oh. I know you are crying now, but you will soon say God is wise. I said you will soon say God is wise. If you can wait, you will see the glory of God. And in the name of Jesus, you will see the glory of God. If you believe he said very well, say I will see the glory of God. Say, so I will see the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me begin to try to tie up. Some of the people that won't come are the betrayers. You know that even Judas came to himself. Judas said, I have sold a righteous man. And the grief was so deep. But I thank God for Peter. At least Peter could find his way. In a midst, 
There are occasionally we have deniers. And do you know what? We even have betrayers. And they told David, Ahitophel is in the conspiracy. He said, ah, Ahitophel. Ahitophel was David's counselor. Have you seen somebody that was telling you something? And you thought you were talking to a human being. Your heart. And you go somewhere, discover everything you told the person in confidence. It's somewhere else. In this work, we see strange things. If I tell you stories, some of you will be shocked. One pastor came to my office and I sat him down and said, do you know the story? There's this lady in our church. She said, this, this, this happened in our family. Ah, do you know about it? He said, yes. I said, ah, you did not tell me. Okay, what do you know about it? I didn't know. As he left the place, he took his key and drove to the lady's house. Pastor moved here, so pay. So the lady came to church every time looking at me then. So after one month, she announced, uh, we are leaving. And, and with me, I said, we talk, need that. So as she was there, I sat there. I said, but there's one case I need to ask of you before you go. This, 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 this. I didn't even know that at that time, they were the ones looking at me. I thought I was the one looking at them. Then I called this pastor. I said, ah, did I send you a job? I was asking you, because let me tell you, every Judas knows the garden. They have privileged information. Because Jesus always resorts there with his disciples. So Judas, they said, where is Jesus? Said, um, the garden. The garden of olive. Let's, let's go. I know they. He said, how do you know? He said, oh, we had one retreat there three months ago. You know, some people have entered some inner caucuses with you. May, may God surround you with faithful men. Yeah. Look at Inga. Nika has traveled with me for over 10 years. If I'm going inside secret places, he will know it. You can't be too advanced to hide anything. I But I thank God. By God's help and mercy, I'm still on the way. And God is helping him too. But some people, if they just hear... You know, some people become strange friends of our wives. They will just say, um, I saw, I thought it was you and daddy I saw. Because somebody sat beside him. They know it's not you. It was a skillful way of introducing a thought. Daddy, You know, some people can kill you by not saying anything. They will say something without saying anything. Say, ma, say, oh, even our pastors need prayer. One, uh, one of my daughters went to mama, my wife, and said, there is no man that does not have side cheek. Christian said, I know. So my wife said, okay, what you are trying to say now is that a pastor, he said, hey, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> They just, they was, it was Pastor Bagai that said when he traveled, some people will now call his wife. I said, Ah, a quick delay. She and Miss Daddy, by and when they come on long off easily, they are planting, they have already planted the battle you will meet at all. Because the woman that never thought she was left, she thought she was supporting. Somebody came and told them they are enjoying their life and leaving you behind. So when you come, ekpele, ekpele. Pastor Ayan said to us, don't let Satan speak to your wife. My dear case, you buy her or When the serpent is talking to Eve, where is Adam? Where is Adam? Pastor Baka said, when that woman told, he picked the call and called the woman. Don't ever call my wife. When he was giving that story many years ago, I was looking, what is his problem? I understand now. Mm. 
I didn't I was feeling like she won't. they were just encouraging your wife. No, they were not encouraging. And let me tell you, these stories of betrayers are not people far. They are it happened in our midst. Sometimes we too are betrayed. Because when I talk about you, that's not even you have betrayed before. You have said what you should not say. And that's why when they are calling you, when understanding came to you, sorrow overwhelmed you. Betrayers are not bold to come. But let me tell you, how many of you know if Judas could have overcome that moment and come back to Jesus, he will not lose his place. There is, there is nothing you have done today that God will put his hand on his head. I've never seen it before. You. There's nothing you want to do that God does not know. Years ago, when I wanted to enter into the ministry, I was afraid not of starting, but of continuing. I said, God, <laughs> this thing, if I wake up one day and I don't even know what to do again, then Jesus came to me and said, no man built a house without first sitting down and counting the cost, whether he's able to finish it. And do you know what he said that was confronted? He said, I've sat down, I've counted the cost of your finishing, including your failure. That thing shocked me. God said, I know you will fail at some point. And I have considered it in the equation. God knew there would be moments of discouragement. God knew there would be moments I would look at him and feel he's unfaithful. He had counted the cost, but he said, I will start. And there is something about God. If he starts something, he will finish it. Are you following? He that began a good work in you is faithful. He will complete it even to the day of his coming. Whatever God has started in your life, God will complete it in Jesus' name. You know, part of the people that found it very hard to come was Thomas. The doubter. The first question is, when Jesus appeared to the disciples, where was Thomas? The Bible says he was the one that was not there. He has pulling back. Why was he pulling back? Every time they are sharing, Jesus will resurrect. Thomas will say, As they like, did Elijah not die? I'm not saying Jesus is not a good man. I'm not saying he's not a prophet though. So one day he came back home. They said, Jesus came. <laughs> me. But me. I cannot afford a second time mistake. If I don't put my hand in his side. And touch the hole in his hand. I will not believe. I will, I will believe in me to change level by. That those days they will say, hey, hey, yes, Lord, I believe. Me, I don't believe like that again. Jesus said, no problem. Then Jesus appeared again and came to Thomas. How many of you are going to thank a Jesus that overcomes even your doubts and say, listen, I will introduce myself again to you. Even in your moments of doubt, I will come again to you. I will come again to, and, and say, see, see, see my friend. He was not there, but he was there. He, he didn't need to ask, what did Thomas say behind me? You know, God does not need to consult pastor to know your heart. It's pastor that needs to consult God to know your heart. What you are saying where you are now, Jesus knows it. So Jesus just came to the audience and went to Thomas straight. See my hand. See. see. And he said, Lord, my Lord. My Lord is there. My Lord. He said, more blessed are those who do not see. He rebuked him, but he didn't chase him. He showed him a more blessed position of believers without sin, but he did not, what, chase him. Say, tell your neighbor, there's still a place for you in the house. Whether you're a denier, even if you have been a betrayer, even if you have been a doubter, there are still a place for you in the presence of God. Are you following me, church? Don't let anybody push you out of this zone. Don't let any offense push you out of the presence of God. Don't let any sin push you out of the presence of God. Come boldly to the throne of grace and receive help and mercy in the time of trouble. Somebody say amen. amen. There is grace for you here. Somebody come on the keyboard. There is grace for you here. There's mercy for you here. There's grace for you here. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I told you that these people were the first to come to the kingdom. 
but the last to come. I want to round up with a pastoral appeal. Who are you in this church? Are you the first to come when God declares anything or the last to come? There could be reasons why you are always the last. You could feel you are not capable. But it's a lie from the pit of hell. You could feel you don't have money. But it's a lie from the pit of hell. God does not look for what you don't have. God expects you to do according to the capacity he has given you. Are you following me? You see, until you start exercising that capacity, it will not grow. Some people say, I will build a church for God. But they can't give him 5,000. He said, when God bless me. But how will God bless you? It's when you put your feet on that path. Your toe must touch Jordan before Jordan opens. Some people want Jordan to open. Then they will put their toe in it. That's not faith. That's sight. Faith does not wait for things to look very clear. Faith only wants to understand what God is saying and counting God faithful. Are you following me, church? Do you understand me now? So I want you to be the first to come. In 2 Timothy 1, verse 15 to 18, let me quickly read these two scriptures as we pray. 2 Timothy 1, 15 to 18. Thou, this thou knowest that all day which are in Asia be turned away from me. Somebody say, be turned away from me. So when you saw Pastor Desmond talking this morning about Pastor Tony, one of our defense lines, not to be disappointed, is not to have much expectation in anybody. Because we know people turn away. There was a story I had many years ago that shocked me to the bones of my, to my marrow. There's a man of God, I won't mention his name, very prominent in our nation. He was preaching in a church in Adwekit. Or, or, I, 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 he was having his convention or something like that. Then a woman came all the way from Adwekit and the woman had cancer. And the woman came at the close of the service. They were about to close when she stepped into the hall. And this man of God raised his hand. We didn't know it was a crowd of people. And he said, there's a woman here, you came from Adwekiti, you have cancer. God has healed you. And that woman was instantly healed. I'm not talking about somebody we, I imagine, we know her. Are you following me? She was instantly healed of cancer. And it was a testimony that went viral. Because our God is a, an all-sufficient God. Many years down the line, the man of God ran into some crisis. And people turned away. Then a friend of ours overheard that woman having a conversation with somebody. I know what the woman said. Hey, this is men of God. Only God even knows the type of power they are using. Something died in that, my friend, because he recollected the testimony service to what that woman said. There is so much viciousness in men. This is the reason why many people don't even want to serve God. Everywhere I go to today, I see fine women. They say, I was talking to somebody recently. I said, your husband is a pastor over this weekend. He said, ah, no. So I asked that, what sin did we sin that God called? He said, me, I just like to serve God. Do you know why? They don't want heartbreak. Because they've seen too many people who invest their lives in people. And people turn away from them. And this is the reason why many people are not in the work of ministry. Look at that scripture again. You know that when I came to Asia, many people turned away from me, of whom are villagers and homogeneous. The Lord give mercy to the house of Onis Onisiphorus, for he often refreshed me. Somebody say he often refreshed me. And was not ashamed of my chains. But when he was in Rome, 
he sought me diligently and found me. Continue. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. In how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest where. Onesiphorus ministered to me when he was in Rome. Rome was where Paul was held. He said he sought me. Do you know how much of comfort goes to a man when you go out of your way to seek them out? Some people, I, said, I, I just came from a prayer over the weekend. And one, the guy that I went to the bear of his mother said, ping me and said something. You don't know the comfort I drew from just seeing you. Christians, your presence matters. Your absence can be warfare. Stop turning away at every little offense. I'm not coming to church this Sunday. He came to me in Rome. He found me in Ephesus. We must see a track record of consistency at different bus stops of our journeys. Are you following me? When we looked at Father, he will saw you. When we were in Ilupeju, we saw you. When we got to the land that God is taking us, we saw you. Are you following me? There are some people you will see that time. And when you look now, they are not there. Not because of anything. Not because they were even sent to a higher thing. But because they got offended in the midst of the way. Are you following me, church? I want you to be a person that Paul said, at my first defense, nobody stood with me. We don't talk, but we see. We know people who stand with us and we know people who don't stand. Are you following me? We know people that are easily triggered and we know people that are easily offended. We know people who will manage. And we know people that no matter what we say to them, you will see them tomorrow morning. When you have a pastor so dutiful and yet so hard like this military barracks man, Occasionally, we just say, What do you mean? And we say, hey, in this, church, this is not my church. Oh. I'm a soft person. I love it soft. Soft touch. Soft touch. Soft touch. Sometimes what we save your life is not soft touch. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. How can a rod comfort you? Because many a times, what you will thank God for most later, you will feel bad most about it when it's first happening. Every one of us have elderly parents and most of us don't even want them to go. Sir so if I asked you about mommy when you were young, at that days you even ask yourself, is this my mommy? When they give you so that when you become a pastor's wife, you will never be found wanting. She didn't know what she was preparing you for, but she was responding to God's divine prompting. Today she can sit back and say, okay, 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 okay. We are not where we want to be, but we are not where we used to be. God has started a journey with us. Are you following me? Are you following me? So that is, that's why. We didn't, we didn't like them that time. That we don't want them to go. When some of them even tell you the inevitable, sit down here. I'm 97 years. And I can say, hey, mama, so hey, mama, you have forgotten all the beating. Because you have seen the peaceable fruit of it. You have seen what it ministered to you. Are you following me? So sometimes, because let me talk to you. Can I talk to you? Church is not soft church. I forget what Lagos is telling you. No, I just go to church. Oh, take your tea. Hallelujah. This morning, the fragrance of grace is here to minister to you. you just cross your leg. No, you will not get to where you are going like that. There are some prayer meetings. There are some serious meetings. Hey, is that prayer you are praying? There are some fasting and prayer. There are some rebuke. Are you following me? He says, this, is, this is, May you not have a pastor that can't speak to you. Because that pastor is pushing you to hell. It's, it's hastening your demise. Are you following me? At my first defense, nobody stood with me. I pray that when they are counting the stories of faithfulness, you would have overcome your doubts. You would have overcome your betrayers. You would have overcome everything that the enemy set on your path. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said you will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. From verse 14 to 18. 2 Timothy 4. 14 to 18. Glory to God. Alexander the copper smith. Did me much evil. 
They will mention some people's name for good. They will mention some people's name for grief. So you get it? quietly than me. Ah, that That will not be your portion. Ah, I know one lady. When I was in school, wrote to me knows the lady. Oh my God! And when she's singing, you'll be feeling the presence of God. This, ah, but I've not seen a more evil, a more divisive person in my life. Am I lying? She will play you cool and deal with you and lie against you. She will say, I saw him on top of a girl and she will stand by it. You will be thinking maybe it's a dream or a vision. Shame me, I bear no me. I saw you. And she will report you to authorities. <laughs> I've met people with this my journey. When you remember those people, you say, Alexander the Coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord rewarded him according to his work. Do you see that in the first one too? He said, the, the Lord remembered them for the work. You will be remembered for something in the presence of God. May you be remembered for good works. Alexander the Coppersmith did me much evil. Of whom you should be aware also, for he greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me. Some people are for soft touch. When church is going, they are there. Immediately they say, hey, the environment in this area is getting offended with the presence. Immediately there is a defense or an answer to be given. Some people will be absent. We don't need such people. At my first answer, no one stood with me. But all men forsook me. I pray God that will not be laid to their charge. David did not lay the rebellion of Amasa to his charge. He did not lay the rebellion of Absalom to his charge because of the ladness of heart. In the name of Jesus, wherever the enemy has planted an offense, God will give you grace to overlook it. In the name of Jesus. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that with me, by me, the preaching of the, might be fully known and that all Gentiles my ear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Verse 18, the last verse. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. That's our prayer for pastor and for his family and for the fortress church. The Lord will deliver you from every evil work. Say the amen if you believe it. Say the Lord will deliver us from every evil work and will preserve us unto his heavenly kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, church. When David returned back, he started speaking to people, and I'll highlight four people he spoke to. He mentioned he spoke to Basilai. He said, Basilai, you must eat at my table for the rest of your life. Because when David was running from Absalom, that man came to the wilderness to support him. We will never forget the people that come around. In the days when nobody came. May you be a Basilai. Because it will be remembered. Are you following me? It will be remembered. So he spoke to Basilai. The next person he spoke to. Was Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was the lame man. And he asked Mephibosheth. Why did you not go with me? When I was living in Jerusalem. I preached a message on that many years ago. I called it questions for the lame man questions for the lame man because let me tell you if you say why didn't you go with me to a lame man you think you have an obvious answer I am lame but it might not be as obvious as that because the Yoruba said if a lame man hears there is going to be war 40 days time in a city the war not, will not meet him there so a lame man can still respond sometimes when we use our in the things that are not working in our life as excuses they might not be totally valid excuses because many a times people have it worse and they are still serving God. So that's why David looked at him. You know what? Why didn't you go with me, Mephibosheth? Then Mephibosheth said, you know I'm a lame man. Then he said, oh, I know Ziba. He has lied. David had to investigate whether it was his lameness or the fact that somebody took advantage of him. 
We need to know why you are pulled back. Is it your lameness? Because if it's your lameness, we will commit you to God. Or is it that you are pulled back? You need to investigate why you didn't come. Are you following me? We will not take your absence for granted. We will ask you, why did you come last? Why was everybody here and you were not here? Why did we declare four weekends of our encounter and you were only in one? Not because of anything. It's not because your presence is our, is our uh, drug. It's because your presence is important to God. Are you following me? And he spoke to Shimei. I showed you that one yesterday. The one that knew you offended. And he found mercy. At the return of the king, he will speak to us. And he will tell some people, Basilai, you must be with me forever. Then he will tell some Mephibosheth, why were you not here? Then he will tell some Shime, I have forgiven you. But there will be a response in the mouth of the king when he returns. For every posture and attitude we have all shown. Are you following me? There will be a response. And may you find mercy in the mouth of the king. Everybody stand to your feet this morning. Everybody stand to your feet. And we are overcoming everything that the enemy has put in our way to impede us. If you need mercy, there's mercy in the house. If you need to overcome your doubts, there's grace in the house. If you have fallen out, you are betrayed. Many a times, most of us have done things that we have preached against. And that's the reason why we are not even bold. You say, ah, the things I used to preach against, even me myself have done it. But don't worry. Don't worry. There's space. There's chance. Lift your hands and begin to respond to God. Find mercy. Find grace in this time of need. Find grace in this time of need. Find grace in this time of need. In the name of Jesus. If there's any offense that the enemy has put on your way, don't let your force become the last. 